Let us take some examples of solutions that is examples of solutions you can take homogeneous or heterogeneous solutions whatever you can take that is sugar dissolved in sugar dissolved in water is a solution then copper sulfate copper sulfate dissolved in water is a solution then uh, you can take sand in water is a solution then uh, chalk in water chalk in water is also a solution then you can take chalk in water is a solution then you can take milk milk in water i'll also add few more carbon tetrachloride is an organic solvent dissolved in benzene so what i'm saying here is like i can say that sugar is if sh sugar is going to completely dissolve in water and copper sulfate is going to completely dissolve in water so i can say that these two are homogeneous homogeneous solutions in which solute is solute is sugar and solvent is water solvent is water homogeneous solution so this is something like solid in liquid type of solution and they are true solutions because the solutions become they are true solutions if you go for sand in water sand in water is an excellent example of suspension sand in water and chalk in water sand in water chalk in water milk in water all these are suspensions all these they comes under suspensions syrupy liquids also they comes under suspension so if you go for suspension you find that sand when sand is dissolved in water it forms a muddy layer at the bottom sand particles are settling here sand is nothing but silicon dioxide particles settle at the bottom chalk it forms a curdy precipitate this is the curdy precipitate these are all chalk chalk is nothing but calcium sulfate calcium sulfate is chalk so this calcium sulfate it forms a muddy a muddy layer so it is just like a suspension even milk in water also milk also it forms a layer a thick layer the fatty layer on the top because the dissolved fats what is milk milk is nothing but milk is made up of water and dissolved fats so fat it forms a layer on the top this is fatty layer on the top so suspensions here i can say that carbon tetrachloride and benzene both of them they are organic solvents c6h6 is benzene and carbon tetrachloride is also uh, an organic solvent so you can find some layer of immiscibility this is called layer of immiscibility sorry you find the layer of miscibility i can say that okay instead of taking uh, carbon tetrachloride what i'm going to do is i'll remove the carbon tetrachloride and if i take water for example if i take i'm removing both i'm taking water and here i'll take carbon tetrachloride ions then you find that here there's a is a point of immiscibility this is called point of immiscibility so i'll say that this is emulsion that means solutions are of different types emulsion you can call it as a colloid actually all emulsions are colloids that means we are able to categorize the solutions into three types true solutions solutions in the form of suspensions and solutions in the form of emulsions or colloids that means in what way we can in what way we can differentiate the true solutions from suspensions and suspensions from colloids let us see in what way we can differentiate this three category of the solution so now we'll prepare a comparing and contrasting table between these three types of solutions that is true solutions suspensions and colloidal solutions 
So, let us differentiate the three components of solutions that is the first one you can take uh, the uh, solutions suspensions and colloids always solutions they are uh, homogeneous homogeneous in nature heterogeneous heterogeneous and colloids also they are heterogeneous here in solutions always they are made up of the components are solute and solvent here the components also same solute and solvent but here the components are dispersed phase dispersed phase and dispersed phase and dispersion medium third point particle size is going to play a very important role particle size particle size is less than less than 1 milli micron m for milli micron for uh, micron m, m is milli mu is for micron that means the particle size is very very less it is lesser than milli micron milli micron means i can say that this is 10 to the power milli means 10 to the power of 3 micron means 10 to the power of minus 6 10 to the power of minus 9 meters let me say particle size here if you go for colloids the particle size is equal to 1 milli micron 1 milli micron means it is equal to 10 to the power of minus 9 meter if you go for suspensions it is between in between in between milli micron to micron size that, is, that means 10 to the power of minus 9 meters to 10 to the power of minus 6 meters particle size ranges the suspensions so here all the solutions because they are homogeneous they are transparent they are transparent they are transparent and uh, they do not scatter the light if it is transparent then light uh, no scattering of light that means the property of the property in which if the solution is able to rotate the plane polarized light in a given direction or in a particular direction then that is called as Tyndall effect. So, in true solutions, solutions or in true solutions you do not find any Tyndall effect, but if here if you take suspensions yes separation and because of this no separation is possible, no separation of components, no separation of components is possible, components separation is possible. possible here possible means for example if you take chalk in water chalk in water is a suspension so when subjected to when it is subjected to filtration filtration filtrate is made up of chalk particles just you take a filter paper and in that on that filter paper you just uh, going on pouring the chalk solution chalk suspension on the filter paper all the water which is present in the chalk it gets filtered and uh, the residue is obtained that residue is settled down with the accumulation of the chalk particles. So, once you heat it and dry it you can again separate the chalk particles. So, that is the most successful method of uh, the suspension of a solution in which you are trying to separate the chalk particles. Suspension yes here also the particle size because larger particle size yes separation is possible is possible. So, definitely it will show the property of Tyndall effect, it shows the property of Tyndall effect, the most significant property of colloids is Tyndall effect is observed. So, these are some of the comparing and contrasting points between the solutions, suspensions and colloids. Let us also take some examples of uh, colloids, if we take the examples of colloids 
if I am taking the examples of colloids and if I am taking the examples of solutions, examples of solutions are quite common but uh, if you take colloids you can take number of examples, milk we can take colloid then soaps and detergents. colloid starch solution is a colloid then blood is a colloid smoke is also a kind of colloid then uh, you can take uh, even fog mist also comes under colloidal nature then foams then uh, suspensions all this comes under the detergents greases also are a form of colloids, even ointments, ointments, lotions, syrups, all these are different uh, colloids. When you go for suspensions, suspensions as already I told you the most popular suspension is that is um, you can take suspension, you can take chalk in water is a suspension, then ink in water is also a suspension then you can take sand in water is the best example of suspension then tea coffee all these are suspensions you can take solutions they are very common we can identify the solutions so these are all different examples of colloids all these are the different examples of suspensions and solutions we are already familiar so there is no need for us to highlight separately so here look at this uh, classification of colloids and what we are able to understand here is like uh, in the classification of colloids we should have a careful observation TP means dispersed phase and DM means dispersion medium dispersed phase is DP Dis DM is dispersion medium dispersion medium so let us have a careful look on the colloids when you are going for the classification of colloids from the table you can also gather one more information saying that actually when we say soul the word soul itself speaks about colloid so when we are using the soul this soul can be anything the dispersed phase can be solid and dispersion medium can be liquid it's just like a solution when you say solution the smaller quantity is solute and the larger quantity is is solvent. So similar here also when you say soul dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is liquid but again depending upon the kind of the dispersion medium based on the type of dispersion, dispersion medium we can reclassify these souls into different categories. So suppose if this if, if, the, dis, if the dispersion medium is water then the soul is going to become aqua soul aqua soul if the dispersion medium is uh, alcohol then the soul in the form of colloid can be called as alcosol. If the dispersion medium is benzene as a solvent, then we call this as benzosol. Like this, different kinds of souls we are going to discover. So, soul is nothing but it is a synonym of colloid, wherein which depending upon the kind of the dispersed phase and dispersion medium this colloid in the form of soul it keeps changing so the basic colloid is always soul this soul in the form of colloid it contains dispersion medium as liquid and dispersed phase is solid and if that is the case all the colloids in the form of salts are ink ink is nothing but ink particles dissolved in water is an ink so it forms a particle like layer ink solution actually it looks like it's homogeneous solution but it is not homogeneous because the ink particles they just forms a thick layer in the water itself and they are not easy uh, to fade away. So we can take ink particle soap solution yes soap when it is dissolved in water it forms plenty of foam that soap particles whatever they are able to form it, it is quite significant in the form of foam yes starch starch is a starch is a polysaccharide uh, it is a greyish colored powder uh, crystalline powder once it is dissolved in water it uh, forms a muddy layer and paints paints also we can take go for solid soul uh, when it is solid soul that means the best example of solid soul is yes you can take uh, that is solid in solid solid in solid means you can take colored gemstones then uh, aerosols aerosols you can take two types of aerosols are possible 
one is solids and liquids means smoke what do you have, what is what do you actually mean by smoke smoke is nothing but frankly speaking the smoke is made up of carbon particles smoke is made up of carbon particles in air smoke is nothing but carbon particles in air and automobile exhausts also they release poisonous gases carcinogenic carcinogenic that is fragments of lead lead fragments and uh, mercury fragments metal fragments they are released from the exhaust of the automobiles and these they diffuse into the air and uh, they create plenty of pollution so polluted air is made up of the colloidal particles that colloidal particles can be observed in the form of smoke or they can be observed in the form of carcinogenic powdered uh, dissolved air which is very very poisonous then you also find aerosols in the form of liquid and gas this is quite common early, early in the morning early in the morning between 5:30 am to uh, i mean 7:30 in the colder uh, weathers you find that uh, fog mist and clouds are there when you go for cloud it's very common cloud is nothing but water vapor in air water vapor in air is nothing but again it is humidity only emulsions liquid and liquid yes milk butter cheese moisturizers all this comes under the emulsions emulsion also it's a form of colloid then foams also it's a kind of colloids then if it is colloid gas and liquid type of colloid then fire extinguishers beer foams and creams are made up of the foams and if you go for gels gels are nothing but solids in liquids jelly fruit jelly then um, gelatin hair gels all this comes under the that is gel type of colloids so this is a detailed classification of the various types of colloids basing on the type of the dispersed phase and dispersion medium and their corresponding examples if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus